Officer Jace went to the diner, hoping to enjoy his lunch in peace. However, things took a shocking turn when a little boy approached him and whispered something in his ear. Jace immediately called for backup. It had been a hectic day for Officer Jace. The harsh sun had beaten down on him, and chasing down multiple criminals had drained him of the little strength he had left. When he finally dragged his tired body into the diner during his lunch break, it was a huge relief. As he waited for his meal, Jace looked around the diner. He was a regular there, and many of the patrons recognized him. Waving in greeting, he smiled and waved back. He knew just about everyone present. However, his eyes soon fell on two unfamiliar faces, a little boy and his father. The boy sat on a chair with his small legs dangling over the edge. Jace immediately noticed that the boy looked tired and bored. His father sat beside him, but the man was engrossed in a phone call, angrily barking threats at whoever was on the other end. The boy looked no older than four, but Jace could tell his father's loud call was making him uncomfortable. Soon Jace's meal arrived, and as he began to eat, he realized just how famished he was. For the next few minutes, he focused on little else. However, it wasn't long before he noticed the boy had gotten up from his seat and was watching him with the innocent curiosity of a child. Jace paused, studying the boy. When their eyes met, the boy quickly looked away, but a few seconds later, his gaze returned to the officer. Jace glanced at the father, who was still glued to his phone, seemingly growing angrier by the minute. The boy cautiously approached Jace, his tiny eyes fixated on the police officer as he took hesitant steps forward. It was clear the boy was scared of him, and Jace didn't like that. Hoping to reassure him, Jace smiled warmly. But the moment he did, the boy panicked and hurriedly ran back to his father. Jace chuckled softly, wondering what the boy might have heard about cops to make him so frightened. Deciding it wasn't his immediate concern, Jace turned his attention back to his meal. When he finished eating, he realized the little boy was watching him again. But this time, his gaze was different. There was something more profound, something that told Jace something was wrong. The feeling was too strong to ignore. A few minutes later, the boy got down from his seat and approached Jace again. His father was still engrossed in his call, oblivious to his son's movements. Jace said nothing as the boy stepped closer. Remembering how the boy had reacted before, he avoided making any sudden moves. It was clear the boy wanted to talk, but he was either too shy or too scared. Jace didn't want to do anything that might scare him off again. The boy looked uncertainly at Jace, then back at his father. He took a deep breath, drawing courage from somewhere deep within, and closed the remaining distance to Jace. He was so close now that Jace could touch him and even smell the faint scent of a hamburger on his breath. Now, leaning in, the little boy whispered something to Jace. Immediately, Jace turned pale. He knew something had to be done, and fast. Jace asked the boy his name, and he replied, Billy. Jace nodded appreciatively and asked Billy to sit on the chair beside him, promising that he would help his mother and not let his father take him anywhere. While Billy's father continued his angry phone tirade, Jace calmly reached for his radio. He called for backup, giving them a quick rundown of the situation. He told them to hurry as he assumed the man might be armed. Jace didn't want the situation to escalate, especially with other patrons around. Innocent civilians could get hurt if things went wrong, so he was willing to wait for backup before making any move. But nothing could have prepared Jace for what happened next. A few minutes after Jace had called for backup, Billy's father finally ended his phone call. Looking around, he realized his son was no longer by his side. Panic flashed in his eyes as he saw Billy sitting with the police officer. The man's face twisted with fear, though he tried to mask it. Taking a deep breath, he walked slowly toward Jace, telling his son it was time to go. Billy started to stand, but Jace gently held him back. He wasn't going to let Billy leave with the man until he investigated the boy's claims. Thinking quickly, Jace said, Billy told me he's hungry. You forgot to order something for him. You can't leave just yet. His voice was firm and his grip on Billy unwavering. The man looked furious and demanded Jace mind his own business. He ordered his son to get up so they could continue their journey, but Jace refused to let go. Instead, he asked for identification. With an angry grunt, the man pulled out an ID card. Jace noted the name, Alfred, and saw that he was a lawyer. For a moment, Jace felt a pang of doubt. What if he was wrong? What if this was just a misunderstanding? 
and Alfred was an innocent man. Could Jace lose his job for taking things too far? But one look at Billy's terrified face banished all his doubts. Just because Alfred was a lawyer didn't mean he couldn't commit a crime. Jace returned Alfred's ID card, saying firmly that Billy would have some lunch before they did anything else. Realizing he wasn't going to get his son back right away, Alfred's face contorted with fury. He looked around the diner in panic, his behavior growing more suspicious by the second. Then, without warning, he turned and bolted toward the exit. But as soon as Alfred reached the door, he ran into the backup team Jace had called earlier. The officers seized him, but Alfred fought back with all his strength. It took three officers to finally pin him down and cuff him. As they dragged him to a squad car, he shouted, I'll make you all pay. You'll regret this. Jace told the officers to take Alfred to the station. He then turned to Billy and asked where his mother was. Jace then turned to Billy and asked, where is your mother? Billy, panicking, replied, she's still at home. She's hurt really bad. Jace knew time was of the essence. If Billy's mother was seriously injured, she could have lost a lot of blood. He asked Billy if he knew their home address. The boy didn't, but he described a toy store near his house, which helped Jace figure out the neighborhood. Without wasting a second, Jace escorted Billy to his patrol vehicle. While Alfred was taken to the station, Jace and Billy drove in the opposite direction, racing toward the boy's home. Billy energetically pointed out the toy store when they saw it and directed Jace to his house, which was only a short drive away. They soon arrived at a small house at the end of the street. Jace instructed Billy to stay in the car, locking it for safety, before swiftly drawing his firearm and approaching the house. The door swung open easily, a clear sign Alfred hadn't secured it when he left. Bursting into the living room, Jace immediately spotted Billy's mother lying on the floor. The carpet was stained red with blood. Help! The woman managed to whisper weakly before her eyes fluttered closed. Jace didn't waste a moment. He quickly pulled out his radio and called for an ambulance, giving the address. Then he knelt beside the woman and began administering first aid, doing his best to staunch the bleeding. The ambulance arrived quickly and by then, Jace had managed to slow the blood loss. The medics rushed Billy's mother to the hospital, working to stabilize her condition during the journey. Throughout the ordeal, Billy was inconsolable, crying uncontrollably out of fear for his mother. Jace stayed close, comforting the boy as best as he could. The doctors are doing everything they can to save her, he assured him. She's going to be okay. While Billy's mother was in the emergency room, Jace sat with the little boy in the hospital's waiting area. Once Billy had calmed down, Jace gently asked him a few questions about what had happened. Speaking softly so as not to overwhelm the boy, Jace encouraged him to share his story. Billy revealed the terrible truth. It had been his father, Alfred, who hurt his mother. He recounted seeing his father attack her and explained how terrified he had been. He also told Jace that his parents were divorced and that Alfred had come to take him away. When his mother resisted, Alfred hurt her. Jace didn't press for more details, knowing the full story would come out in time. What mattered now was that Billy and his mother were safe. Jace stayed at the hospital for a few hours, ensuring that both Billy and his mother were taken care of. Thankfully, no major organs had been damaged, though she had lost a lot of blood. After undergoing a transfusion, Billy's mother, Jasmine, slowly regained consciousness. The first person she asked to see was her son. When Jace brought Billy to her bedside, Jasmine hugged him tightly, tears of relief streaming down her face. She apologized to him for everything he had been through and promised that she would protect him from now on. Once Billy had fallen asleep beside her, Jace took the opportunity to interview Jasmine about what had happened. Her story was heartbreaking. Jasmine explained that she and Alfred had once been happily married. Like any newlywed, she had looked forward to a lifetime of love and companionship with her husband. However, after Billy was born, Alfred's career took off, and he was promoted to partner in his law firm. With the promotion came late nights, frequent trips, and long absences from home. At first, Jasmine was lonely but understanding. Yet over time, Alfred became distant, locking himself in his study when he was home and pushing her away whenever she tried to connect with him. Then came the day she discovered the truth. One morning, Alfred had left for work but forgot his briefcase. Jasmine, thinking he'd need it, decided to take it to him at his office. When she arrived, she found his office empty and his secretary nowhere to be found. 
After bribing a cleaning lady, Jasmine learned the devastating news. Alfred hadn't been at work for over a week. He was on leave and hadn't told her. Determined to uncover what was really going on, Jasmine hired a private investigator. The investigator returned with irrefutable evidence, photos and videos of Alfred cheating on her with his secretary. They had been living a life of luxury, enjoying expensive restaurants, hotels, and cruises while Jasmine was left at home. None the wiser. That night, when Alfred returned home, Jasmine confronted him with the evidence. Enraged, he struck her for the first time. Jasmine fled with Billy to her sister's house, where she filed for divorce. The divorce was bitter and drawn out, with Alfred using every legal trick in the book to try to gain custody of Billy. But Jasmine had enough evidence to secure full custody of their son. Even after the divorcee was finalized, Alfred's fury only grew. He stalked Jasmine, threatened her, and ultimately violated a restraining order by breaking into her home and attacking her in a desperate attempt to take Billy. Jace was deeply moved by Jasmine's story. He promised her that he would ensure Alfred faced justice for everything he had done. After leaving the hospital, Jace returned to the station where Alfred was being held. He had Alfred transferred to the interrogation room for questioning. At first, Alfred denied everything, claiming innocence. But when he learned Jasmine had survived and was recovering, he broke down and confessed. Alfred admitted that his plan had been to take Billy out of the country and start a new life somewhere no one would ever find them. However, his getaway driver had been delayed, which was why he had been angrily making phone calls at the diner. That delay ultimately led to his downfall. Jace ensured that Alfred was charged with multiple offenses, including kidnapping, assault, and violating the restraining order. He was certain that Alfred would spend a long time behind bars for his crimes. When Jace returned to the hospital, he was relieved to find Jasmine in much better condition. The doctors had told her about Billy's bravery in seeking help, even with Alfred so close by. Jasmine hugged her son tightly, promising to protect him and thanking Jace for saving them both. The day Alfred was sentenced to prison, Jace and Jasmine were both present in court. They watched as he was led away, tears streaming down his face. It was a fitting end for the man who had caused so much pain and suffering. And as Jace watched Alfred being taken to the vehicle that would transport him to prison, he knew that justice had been served. Billy and Jasmine could finally begin to heal, and their future, though uncertain, looked a little brighter. What would you have done in Jace's shoes? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.